Hello, today I will show you a basic enemy AI. First we will review the state machine. I'm keeping the state machine really simple. The usual states are animations. Idle, walk, attack, death. But the one I need to explain is turn. This state will run while the enemy is trying to face the player. We need a transition to select which way the enemy is turning. I added here a time scale to speed the turn velocity. As you can see when the turning condition is activated the root motion view reflects the rotation the enemy will perform. Now let's review the code. Now let's review the code. We have exported properties to define the enemy behavior. The variables to control the movement and the variables to control the state machine, life, etc. In the ready function we will get the enemy nodes. I'm trying to organize my enemies to have the same elements. The target is a plane that will play a default animation when the enemy is selected. I'm adding a visibility notifier to check if enemy is on screen. Godot doesn't have a culling system, so even if the enemy is behind a wall it will be reported as on screen. Detect area will alert the enemy when the player is too close. Bar position and life progress work together but the progress bar is not a child of the 3D position because the position will be calculated at run time. The model has attached an area 3D as hit box. We get a reference to all these elements here, in the ready function. And then we add it to the enemy's group. Now in the physics process we will draw the target plane. And try to get a reference to the player node. Once we have it we need variables to update the state machine's transitions. If the enemy's current life is below zero we will trigger the dead state. To dispose the enemy we need to know when the animation finishes. Right now there is a bug in Godot's state machine that continues reporting the animation is playing after the end node is reached. This will not be fixed until version 4. So we are getting the animation name from the state machine and from the animation player we get the length to create a timer. When the timer ends we will trigger a function to dispose the enemy. If the enemy is alive we will get the angle to the player. And decide if we will turn left or right to face the player. If the player is not in range, or is dead, the enemy will be idle. The enemy will be turning if the angle with the player is greater than the angle tolerance. The enemy will move if it's not close enough and not as turning. And finally the enemy will attack if not moving and not turning. This next lines will turn the enemy when the angle is lower than the angle tolerance. If you don't have a turning animation this will be the way the enemy is faced to the player. The next lines are to set in the state machine the transitions we calculated. And then we apply the root motion included the rotation when it is turning. These last lines are to set the life bar above the enemy's head. We will show the bar when the player is in range and the enemy is on screen. We will use the unproject position function from the camera applied to the position above the head. We just need to center it using the margins and set the modulate to show, hide it. Now we have a function that will return if the enemy is on screen and a few virtual functions to define the enemy behavior. The hit received function manages the damage received. Enter action area and exit action area are called when the player enters, exits the action area. And finally the death function, it will create a tween to shrink the enemy and then free it. These controller is an abstract class. 
It has common functionality for all the enemies and the behavior can be changed. We will see how with the orcish enemy. What I want to change is the way the enemy is disposed. Because every enemy is different we will get the mesh and material of this enemy. Also we need to make the material unique for this instance. That's why we set the material override with a material duplicate. Now when the death function is called we will create a tween to interpolate the transparency from 0 to 1. This function will set the albedo color in the main material and the outline. Now let's see how it works. You can see how the enemy chases and stops. and how it turns to face the player. You can see how the enemy dissolves. Now I will shoot an arrow. I will make this one to chase me. Now I will change the enemy life. Thanks for watching, I hope you find this video useful.